Hey guys, Troy Francis in Riga. So I wanted to talk about the need to peel back the layers of the onion in a manner of speaking, if you want to start to improve in terms of dating. And uh, what do I mean by that? Well, basically, I think a lot of us are quite self-contained, let's say. And I say a lot of us, I mean a lot of guys, perhaps those guys who were slightly more introverted, perhaps those guys who were slightly more analytical maybe as kids not that i was particularly analytical but i was certainly quite quite cerebral and quite uh introspective and quite introverted as well and that's not just about shyness i mean i was also shy actually as a kid but uh introversion is really about enjoying being on your own and so there was a lot to break through so there were those things to break through but there was also there was also a necessity for me to break through a sort of reticence about being a physical and emotional and sexual entity as well. And that's a little bit tricky to unpack perhaps, but what I'm saying is really, when I was younger, I was interested primarily in the intellect and matters of the intellect, okay? I like to read books, I like to, uh, I like to write, and I was quite interested in, in different things like history and stuff like that. You know, I quite liked, I quite liked school, uh, you know, as a nerd in that sense. I quite liked study. I quite liked thinking about things. I was interested in philosophy. I was not really a physical person. And I used to sometimes almost wish that I could just be this brain floating around and not a physical entity. You know, I was very embarrassed, hor horrifically embarrassed by the thought of, say, dancing, you know? It just seemed to me the most appalling thing, really. Uh, I was very uncomfortable with uh, physical touch between people, even sort of friendly physical touch. I wasn't into sports or any of that kind of stuff, and obviously that didn't help me either because, well, we, we all know. Uh, the reasons for that, you know, obviously popularity and stuff like that. But um, I didn't, I, there wasn't really, I wasn't in touch with myself physically, if that makes any sense. You know, I, did, I wasn't, and, and certainly then when you think about, as you get older and you think about sexuality, I mean, if you're not in touch with yourself physically, if you don't regard yourself as a physical creature, if you find the thought of physical touch and the thought of like dancing and expressing oneself in a physical way, if you find all of that, abhorrent really or at least against your nature then it's going to be very very hard for you to engage with women in a in a romantic or sexual way okay because because there's so much that's that's held back there's so much that is repressed and I was a very repressed character for a long time I believe and it may be that you are the same way and I think that a lot of the reason for guys who I work with who have difficulties in this area, it's not so much because, you know, they don't know the theory of what to do or what to say. I mean, let's face it, none of this stuff is particularly complicated. It's not, you don't need to have a degree or a PhD in dating science in order to know the basic things that you need to do. But the problem is more that they are unable, unwilling maybe, but also unable, to really open themselves up to the women that they date. Um, in any meaningful sense. That's not to say you might sit on a date with a girl and tell her a bit about your, your background and your, your upbringing and, you know, things that you're interested in and stuff, but you're not really opening up to her in a physical and emotional sense, all right? And again, this is one of these slightly intangible, quite nuanced concepts that is somewhat difficult to get across in a video like this, but you've got to be, for a start, You've got to make sure that she is aware that you are into her physically in that sense, okay? Now, that's not about being a simp. It's not about putting her on a pedestal, but she's got to, she's got to know that you are... You've got to communicate that you are a physical being, and that is the... There's a basis of that within the interaction that you guys are having. Because if you don't, then she's not really going to see you as a sexual option, okay? And that's not going to do you any favours. And as I said, 
I think that was one of the key areas where I really fell down years and years ago because I just wasn't in touch with that side of myself, let alone able to then communicate it to anybody else. How did I break out of it? Well, <laughs> to be honest, as I, and I've told this story many times, I'm gonna turn around here actually. I told this story many times. Um, I, really, to be honest, I broke out of it by going and partying a lot and drinking a lot and taking various party drugs and it kind of broke through everything for me, I suppose. And I don't recommend that. I'm not saying that that is the solution because it, 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 it caused me a lot of trouble, a hell of a lot of trouble. And it took a long time to rebuild from a lot of the damage I did. But nevertheless, it was a, a psychic change that was in my case brought on by, by alcohol and other substances that kind of just broke me out of my introspection and broke me out of the cage, the mental cage really, that I had been living in for all those years, for all of my life, really. And essentially, to put it in crude terms, I got to a point where I kind of just didn't really give a fuck in the same way that I used to. And I was just like, okay, here I am, this is me, deal with it. And I didn't know at the time how people were gonna react to that. You know, um, surprisingly, people reacted to it pretty well, for the most part. And I started to find that, um, there were women who were attracted to me, who liked the energy that I was putting out and they wanted to, to spend time with me. And then as I went on and went into sobriety as well, by the way, so then I, I wasn't drinking anymore. I wasn't using any substances, but I was, um, you know, still going out and about and meeting people and all that stuff. And I found that um, I still had that same energy because I'd broken through, you know, I'd broken through those, those layers, or I suppose to go back to the original metaphor, I had peeled off those layers of the onion. And now all of a sudden I was much more loose and much more open as a person. And again, you know, I think that this is a, this is a, a, a tricky thing for um, a lot of guys who come to this space, go down this little, little street here. I think this is a tricky thing for a lot of guys who, who come to this space because how do you do it? And the first thing I think is, is knowledge and awareness. The first thing is to be aware of the fact that you are somewhat closed off in this way, which is a huge thing because once you're aware of something, you can then start to deal with it, okay? And then the second thing is desensitization over a period of time. but and this is the important bit, monitored desensitization, because what is really helpful is to have somebody who you can work with, who, who you can look at, you know, what you're doing, the way that you're coming across and help you to make adjustments, help you to make tweaks. And I never had that. Um, and so for me, it was very much, um, it was very much a uh, process of trial and error. Obviously for you, if you work with me or you work with another coach, um, it doesn't have to be trial and error because we can work together and um, I can help you because I can point out the things that you're doing and the things that maybe it would help you to do. But you, you need to have that desensitization over a period of time and it's gonna get easier for you, okay? But look, I mean, a lot of us, and I think probably a lot of people who come to, to my stuff, are a bit stuck in their heads and a bit stuck in their in their non-physical self you know intelligent and articulate perhaps and maybe quite successful in some areas of life but they just they're not really flowing all right and so the energy you're putting across is very repressed it's not very sexual it's not going to turn her on it's not going to make her excited to want to be with you okay now when you think about the dudes who are doing well in dating, if you go to a bar or a club, you know, you come somewhere like this, go to the bar or the club. The dudes who are doing well in this stuff, it's not because, it's not because they're saying things that are really clever. It's not because they are, you know, amazing Oscar Wilde sort of conversationalists. It's just that they're quite loose. It's just that they're quite at home with themselves, you know, and they're able to, they're able to, you know, communicate that and bring that out. It, and, and that seems very simple, and it, for them it probably is, because they are, let's say, naturals. But um, for you it might not be, and it might be something that you need to learn. 
as I say, the first thing is recognizing this, and then the next thing is working on it, and, and ultimately desensitization is the answer um, over a period of time. Anyway, this is something I can help you with, but if you would like to learn more, then obviously you've got to hit subscribe to the channel. You've got to hit subscribe to the channel. Come on, all of this free gold that's being poured out on a daily basis, at least give me a subscribe. Uh, give me a like, write a comment beneath, and if you want to jump on a free call with me, then my Calendly is below. You can book a free 15-minute call. We can have a chat about where you are. I'll see if I can help you in any way. Um, and also, you can grab my collection of 11 books about dating and the dating marketplace. It's called Renegade Dating Blueprint. The link is below. From Riga, Troy Francis. I'll see you guys again very soon. Bye-bye.